Guys, Calum from Action Backers here. Hope you all had an awesome New Year's Eve um, and are having a good start to your 2019. I just wanted to talk to you quickly today um, about something I talked about in the podcast, which is how we bet for value. So I thought it'd be cool to put together for you guys a few calculators that I use. So this is a, a spreadsheet that you can use on your own. So the first thing you're going to want to do here is just come to File, and then you're just going to want to make a copy for yourself, and that way you can edit it for yourself. Um, but let's go through um, what these cells mean and, and how to actually use this sheet. So to start with, we have our EV calculator, and this is really simple. So all you're going to say is whatever your risk is. So in this case, we're risking 1.66 units to win one, and then you're going to set your unit size. So I have it set to 25, but you can change it to anything you'd like. And then you're going to enter in your predicted win percentage. So if you think it's going to win, um, if you're 65, you think there's a chance that it's going to win 65.8% of the time, then your EV on this bet is $5.80 in the long run, meaning you should make that bet. However, if we come to the second example, if you're risking 1.8 units to win one, and you think that your the win percentage is only 52%, you can see based on a $100 unit size in the long run, you're actually losing $34.40. And you can change this up, you know, even if it's 10 or actually let's do, I don't know, $5. Even on $5, you're losing $1.72. So you don't want to make that bet, okay? Um, sometimes you'll run into these marginal bets here. So you can see we're risking two to win one, but we think it's a 66.7% chance to win. So two-thirds per two-thirds um, percent chance to win and you'll see here that it's in the long run it's it's plus EV but it's marginal so these are some of the ones where you're laying a lot of juice uh, maybe on a heavy favorite so you'll want to pick your spots here so that's essentially the EV calculator and how that comes into play is with the implied probability and the Kelly criterion so <coughs> excuse me the implied probability this is essentially you're just plugging in the odds that you're getting from your book. Um, so your positive and your negative, and that'll work out the, the VIG that the book's actually taking. So in the example here, um, you know, the bet I, I found the, the underdog is, is playing at plus 175 and the favorite is at minus 195. So you'll notice here for the negative odds, you don't actually have to put the negative in front. You just type in the number and it'll calculate the VIG. So right now on this book, the, the, or on this bet, sorry, the book is taking two and a half percent. Now, what this means is we can use this implied probability, um, as well as an EV calculator to figure out what we should bet. So in this case, we'll look at the positive odds here. So let's say the book thinks, um, or the, the line is telling us that it's a 36.36% chance to win but we actually think it's 40%. What we'll, what we'll do here, um, first of all, we can plug that in. So let's say um, we're gonna risk one to win 1.75, right? Um, and this is just divided by, ten, uh, divided by 100 here. And let's say hundred $100 unit size. So here we actually think it's 40%. So you can see this is plus EV in the long run. We're actually making $10. So, um, but what what should we bet? Should we just bet one unit on this? Um, should we bet five units? Who, who really knows? Should we bet $100? I don't know. So to figure that out, all you would do is you would take the odds that you're given. So 175, convert them to decimal odds, which I've set up in this calculator to do for you. So all you're gonna do is plug in the decimal odds here, 2.75, your projected win probability, which we said was 40%, and that's gonna calculate the recommended wager size as a percentage of your bankroll. Um, and you can see the different options for the full Kelly criteria on half, third, quarter, and eighth. Um, that's also gonna tell you the corresponding wager size in dollars. Okay, so um, in this case, we should make that bet. 
Um, if we wanted to get really aggressive with the full Kelly, we'd be betting $57. I usually look at the half or third Kelly. That's that's where I'm comfortable. Um, your risk of ruin is a lot lower, but you still have a lot of upside. So in this case, I'd probably be looking around a half Kelly. So we'd want to make a, a bet around $29. Um, calculated as a, a, as a unit, that looks like 1.16 units. So this unit measurement is essentially just taking... Um, this calculation here, which I've set to two and a half percent of your bankroll. So again, you can enter your current bankroll in here um, And you can see if we you know, let's do something like that It will automatically calculate for you and change up everything you need So in this case <coughs> we like a half Kelly um, 1.16 units again if you wanted to change up this unit size uh, make it more aggressive or um, more conservative you would just have to click on the little 25 here and change the formula so essentially right now it's just multiplying the current bankroll by 25 percent which is point or sorry two and a half percent which is 0 0.025 so if you wanted to make it say five percent you would change it to a five and that would give you 50 if you wanted to get really aggressive and change it to like 10 percent you go 0.1 and that'd be obviously a hundred dollars um I think, especially with bankrolls around $1,000, um, 2.5% is, is really good to start with um, and adjust as you feel comfortable. Again, this is just to get you a sort of a, a, a baseline. You're going to be leaning on the, the Kelly criterion and the percentage of your bankroll to tell you, um, but I know like people like to see unit numbers and things like that, and for tracking, it might make things easier. So all we're going to do here is we like this play so now we have obviously up here our potential plays and this is just to keep track while you're going through and doing your homework um, so you can see here i have a few plays from the other day um, the hurricane centers red wings habs and the sharks and the oilers that was from new year's eve uh we won three 3.9 units on on this play um mainly from uh parlaying the the hurricanes and the Habs, we got a huge, like really great price on the Habs, as you can see. Um, they were underdogs, but we had them as big favorites, so we we bet them a lot there. <coughs> um, and then, so all you would do is you would just say Team X, whoever you're betting on, and then you can just take in, you know, if you want your half Kelly, you would just say 1.16 units, and it will tell you the wager amount. That way you can get all your plays set up, um, do your homework, and then go to your book, and just enter in your dollar amounts for each play uh, makes it really simple. So this is this is mostly for money line bets. Um, obviously, it works for spreads as well if you want to, um, or or puck lines just to, to check. So um, for hockey specifically, we use it mostly for money line um, and and puck line, um, but but it, it applies no matter what you're betting. The other thing we have here. Um, that I made for you guys is a totals calculator. Now, I've made this specific to hockey, so if you're not looking to bet hockey, then it might not apply to you. Um, but the principle sort of remains the same. So essentially, <coughs> what we have here is anywhere you see um, blue in the cell, other than this blended goal total, that's an input, okay? So, um, and essentially what we're trying to do is get um, a blended total, using a couple different metrics um, and see compare that total to what the actual line is so in this case you can see here um, we've gone ahead and filled this out this is old um, the road team was vegas and the home team were the coyotes so the road team um, we took vegas and however you choose to figure this out is up to you we took the road um, goals for on average which was 2.74 goals their shots for which is 3.96 shots, uh, 31.96, sorry, shots for, and then their average shots per goal. And this is simply just taking um, this number here, the, sh the, the shots for divided by their goals for, to give you the average number of shots it takes to score a goal. Um, we're taking their average goals against, and then their average shots against. Again, that, that, that's calculated um, in a similar way for the expected shots against. And then we're filling out a few other fields here as well. So these will automatically be calculated for you. Um, so expected goals against and then shots against divided by opponent shots per goal. 
So I know that sounds complicated, but if you look at it, it's, it's quite logical. So all this is saying is your average, if we look at the formula, H3, so H3 is here. So the expected shots against, it's taking that, and then it's just dividing that by the opponents, so in this case the Coyote, average shots per goal, which is 12.13, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so that tells us that we can expect roughly two and a half goals based on that criteria. And the reason we do this is we're trying to get as many different combinations of potential outcomes as possible just to get a good um, a go a good potential goal total. Um, and then we compare it to the line. So you can see here the line was actually five and a half and our blended goal total lands right on five and a half. Um, so that tells us a couple things. One, it seems fairly accurate, um, but two, there's probably not a lot of value in the line, right? If if we know that the line is five and a half and our, our totals are landing right around that, even within a quarter puck, you're probably not gonna wanna take it, especially when the odds here are not really leaning one way or the other. Um, however, let's say the Coyotes Home goals four was actually, instead of 2.67, let's say it was four. Now you can see just by adjusting that one metric, even if we keep everything the same, you can see now that our goal total jumps up to six and a half. So if we were ever doing this, and this actually came up the other night, there was a total of five and a half and um, the, our calculations came out to four and a half. Um, if you're ever doing this and it comes out like that, now you see if you, if you actually think it's six and a half and the line's at five and a half and you look at the over, we're getting, we're getting positive odds. This is probably a good bet. Um, if it's under same thing, you, you still always want to take into consideration the predicted, um, probabilities as well as the implied probabilities from the book. Um, but that's, that's just something you can do. So again, I made these calculators for you guys. If you want to use them, great. Um, if not, no worries. I, I definitely recommend making a copy first though. So that way it's, you can, you can make sure that it's your, um, your stats and info and that other people aren't going to be going in and, and changing things up. So I hope you find this helpful. I'm going to add a link to the video, um, to walk you through right to the calculators and then I'll share this. Um, let me know what you think. Thanks, guys.